He therefore that minister to miracles. He minister to the spirit and work miracles among you. Is it by the words of the Lord by hearing of it? Christian miracles. That's verse 5, Galatians chapter 3. Christian miracles is not by doing anything of the law. In the law, the miracles that were ministered in the law were ministered by angels, not God. In John chapter 5, where we just read, there was in Jerusalem a pool called Bethesda, where all sick people are there. All kind of sickness, sick people. Somebody had been there for 38 years. Do you know what was happening there? Angel came down and will shake the water. Person who will jump in first will get healed. If somebody asks you to bring water, you will drink, you get your miracles. Bring anointing oil. Pay this rituals. Do this and you do. It's angels who are doing that to you. The miracles of God, the true miracles, you don't need to do anything. You only need to believe. You don't need to go anywhere. You don't need to go to temple going to consult anybody. Watch what happened there. This is John chapter 5. Jesus saw a man there who had been there for 38 years because those miracles from angels don't consider who even is poor or who is, is, is anybody, even rich people can get it. Because the angels don't have the mercy like that. Somebody has been there for 38 years, but nobody's considering him. So Jesus watched. How did Jesus got to know? How did he get to know that that man has been there for 38 years? Because when Jesus was doing that, he was not even 30 years. He went to Jerusalem and stood there and watched and saw that that man was a cripple. He had been there for 38 years. So he went through them quietly and stood by the man and said, do you want to be whole? You want to remove him from those rubbish things he's following there? Because I'm not, he will die there. Do you want to be whole? He said, I don't have anybody. Yeah, you know that I don't have anybody. That's why 38 years you have been in that same place looking for miracles. Get up. Take your bed. Walk home. The man did it, carry his bed and go home. But do you know what he offended? That day was a Sabbath. Moses' law prohibited anybody carrying anything or walking one mile in that day. So the, Jew, the man was here immediately. After 38 years, the Jews met him and said, Who asked you to carry the mat? He didn't even know the person who told him to do that. Because when God is doing miracles for you, it's not a fanfare. You don't need a pastor. You don't even need anybody. The man didn't even know the man who told him to get up. The man who hit him, he didn't even know him. He didn't ask his name. So when they asked him, who told you to carry the mat? He said, the man who asked me to get up. Because they know he was a cripple. The man who asked me to get up and I got up and it was here, he told me to carry the mat. Who is that man? And the man could not answer. He has a big problem. Because Moses has commanded, as well as 31, that anybody, I think from verse 12, coming to 18 or so, anybody who does any work on Sabbath day should be killed. Carrying your mat on Sabbath day means death. Who told you to carry the mat? He said, I don't know. It's okay. Go and find the man. We are giving you time. Or we'll kill you. Where is he going to find him? Because he didn't even ask the person's name. And he didn't even look at even the person's name because all of them had bed. They're all Jews, men. And Jesus was watching them. What was going on? He knew that they would kill him. If he didn't intervene. So he went to the man and said, Guy, now you are held. Don't go and do those things again. As worst thing will happen to you. The man did not even listen to that word. He ran quickly to the Jews. It's Jesus. Because now you know who, who, who healed him. It's Jesus. The Jews therefore persecuted Jesus and wanted to kill him. 
Because he had done these things, not only one thing, he had done these things on the Sabbath day. John chapter 9, he did not even tell somebody to just go. He made a cray, he mowed a cray and smelled the person's eyes and told him to walk some miles away to watch his face on the Sabbath day. So they said, this man is a sinner because he doesn't obey Moses. Because they don't know the man they are talking about. Listen, Jesus told them that my father is working even till today. That's what I'm also working. Because my father, I watch and walk. Verse 30, John chapter 5. I can myself do nothing. What I see my father doing is what I do. So if I'm working on Sabbath day, it means my father is working on Sabbath day. You have not, you don't even know him. This, this, is, this is what is called faith in God. Jesus said, have faith in God. Verily, I say to you, whatever you say, and you doubt not, but you believe, you get whatever you get. This is where the problem is. Doubt what? Doubt what you who believe is. Because when you believe, you have received the spirit of Christ. Now you are not an old creature again. You are a new creature. The spirit in you is the spirit of Christ. It's not Adam again. The life you have is the life of Christ. It's not the life of Adam again. And Christ's life is eternal life. That's why he said, if they keep what he is saying, they will not see death. That's why he said that. Do you understand this now? But the moment you mingle yourself with the law of Moses, that is why Paul was talking in 2 Corinthians to trade that we are not sufficient. This guy was a fallacy. People think that maybe people don't know Paul very well. People think that Paul was even like Peter, James, and John. Paul was one of those who were persecuting Jesus. He said, I thought I have to do a lot of evil things against Jesus of Nazareth. He said that because Jesus was there. He was one of their chief lawyers. The Pharisee chief lawyers. If you look at his story, listen to his story in Acts chapter 22 and Acts chapter 26. If you see what this man said, thought he would do him. I was mad at Christians. Now this man is saying in 2 Corinthians to three. Not that we are sufficient of our soul, think of anything as our soul, but our sufficiency is of God, who has made us able ministers of the New Testament. Now, this one doesn't want to talk about the Old Testament. And this New Testament is not the Hebrew Bible. Jews don't believe in this. Why do you go and believe in their Bible and want to do that? You see, Jesus did not destroy the Jewish Bible, which is the Old Testament in Christian Bible. The reason is that all the promises that were spoken there were spoken, were sent, Jesus sent angels to come and speak them. So those things are for Christians. 